of course, that was a crazy idea to go around being middle-aged, buying myself a backpack and being on the road, meeting my brother and then rolling the dice to see where I was going to go next. But that's what I did. Well, my name is Monique Loret and I come from France. I came to Toronto in my mid-twenties and I was so excited to come into this new world. It was fabulous time for me and across Canada I did so many things. I was bursting with ideas and energy and everything was great and exciting. And then I settled down. I have three beautiful sons and I raised them with all my art. I really believe in passion and I wanted them to find out their uniqueness, who they were. That's always has been my pride and joy to, uh, to have those boys around me. They fill my house with music, friends and, uh, you know, and really at times, I must say. It was a stressful time to follow ups and downs of uh, teenage boys. And for my clients, I always wanted to give them the best, but I was getting bigger and bigger projects. It was a lot, it was a lot. But in 2014, I hit the wall. Like all of a sudden, that I wasn't sure what was going on. I mean, I was just like this little warrior of life where I had to kind of look, am I doing things right or, or what? My kids were full of energy. I did that well, my clients were happy. But I wasn't, and I had no idea why. I just knew that I was running on empty. The universe knocked at my door. My brother was on his way to Peru from France, and he did a detour. He felt that he had to come for some reason. And he said, why don't you come meet me? And he was like, oh, can I? And I said, no, 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 I'm too reasonable, can't do that, forget it. Then he left. And I went back on my flat day after flat day. Then the idea was kind of growing in my head. And I say, gee, yeah, maybe, you know, I have a bucket list and maybe this is the time. And I spoke to my older son. I say, you know what? I like to go and meet Jean-Yves, but I may keep going. What do you think? And my older son say, mom, yeah, but no more than six months. <gasps> Spoke to my other sons, and my other sons was like, yeah, sure, mom, go for it. And when I got permission to leave, I mean, that door opened slightly, and then a bit more, and a bit more. I mean, I had to take that. I knew that it would close shut if I was not going for it. I rented my office, got rid of my car, told my clients that, yes, I was doing a creative sabbatical for six months. It was a journey. And my journey was to leave things behind in good shape and go. And when I arrived in Peru, my brother was there. I trust my brother with all my heart. He's the one that guided me along the way. He's the best traveler in the world. He's the one that showed me how to slow down, how to breathe, how to smell, how to see the market. You know what? Slowly, I start traveling the way he did. We will have a little spoon in our pocket and we'll go to a market, get avocado and have that for lunch. My sense of wonder was coming back and I was not there to learn, I was there to feel. And he knew that. There was like beautiful scenery, green, sculpture, flowers, there was a whole wide world there, like completely different from what I was used to. And Peru in Bolivia, my brother was the conductor. I just follow him. And he, again, he was the best teacher how to mentor me into that voyage of my own afterwards. And yes, I, I know he was working. I was in the moment. I was in the wow. I was in the living fully. And that's what I kept going and going and going. I needed to really run free. I left my brother after three weeks, Peru and Bolivia. I was ready. And I knew I had to go on the other side of the world just to make sure that the mother in me would not run at the first event in my kid's life. 
For me, going from Peru to Bali was exactly what I needed. I needed to reboot. For me, it was really what I learned, what I feel, how I fit my soul. Even if nothing else was coming back, it's me and being a different, a transformed, a reboot human being. Colors spoke to me, noise, all the different senses, but exact, it was this woman, the, the place of woman and the human side of their life, their, their authenticity that was touching me the most. Like I was looking for my own authenticity, I left all the ego behind. I was not a mother. I was not a designer anymore. I was just this middle-aged woman. I was 57 at the time with a backpack and going. And I was just observing what was going on. I needed to feed my soul. And I think that's what I did there. Just whatever I could see, hear, breathe. You can't be anything else but in the moment. You arrive in the country, it's like, okay, where the heck am I? What do they eat here? What's the money? You see people, the way they live, you are in the middle of their life. And it was feeding me day after day. of bicycles for some reason that fascinated me. These bicycles that were against a wall in Japan or in Malaysia or in India, all that has some life around it, even there was just an object. But he had a lot of poetry for me. Like when I was in Singapore, which is really impressive, it's very modern, it's very consumer-oriented, and, you know, that's not what it was about. It was about like a simple bicycle against a palm tree. That was really what it touched me. Like going back to the basics, that's where I was looking for in me. It's like, where are my basics? Where are my roots? Who am I? It could be quite tiring to keep moving. I mean, I took train, I took ferries, I took buses, I took taxi, three whalers, and, and then you need to stop. That's where I started going to use hostel. It's incredible, the people you meet there, they say, how long have you been traveling? Where are you going next? And that's what mattered. You become a certain floating group of people with incredible knowledge of where to go next. And somebody asked me, how does a middle-aged woman travel around the world? You smile your way around the world, right? I mean, it's not when you're 20, then you don't smile, but afterwards you become like a mother, a sister of whoever, and they say, wow, she's human. All over the place, people will look at me and say, what's that short woman with a backpack? Where is her partner, husband? What is she doing? And I will see them looking at me, and I will smile. And when I smile, then there will be this big burst of tears, just instantly, you know, and I love to see that all over the place, they smile back. The world is a beautiful place. And then I went to Kerala and I did three days in Amas Ashram, south of Fort Kochi, which is, was more like to see all these seekers that come for three, four days in India and then go, you know. That was not so spiritual, it was more anecdotic. But you see, like I was kind of feeling of all what I needed at different level. One day I had this vision, and I don't know why, I just, it just dawned on me, I saw my kitchen with 20 people, like often it was the case, like my kids, their friends, my friends, like 
conversation, food on the table, red wine, and that energy that was so familiar. And I was like, oh, this is so nice. And it was not something I was seeing from someplace else. It was in me. And I said, how lucky, how lucky I am to have all that. Well, I was very happy to come home. I came home at Christmas. There was a Christmas tree in my house. My friends were there. My clients had been waiting for me. And, you know, I just re-entered my world without any difficulty. I was ready. I needed that complete separation from everything that I was to really reinvent myself. Having listened to the universe with a bit of help of people around me was the best things I ever did for myself. It was a fabulous gift I gave to my life. Like I'm running today with the energy I gained in 2014. And I have this immense sense of gratitude for that journey, for people who encouraged me to take it, for my kids who allow me to go, and for all what it brought me today. Then for me, it's just like, there is, you want to live long and happy when you have to listen to yourself. And when it times is to feed your soul, you have to go for it. Well, I took a lot of pictures during that trip. Like I just wanted to keep things, you know, to keep memories. I took a journal as well, but it was not, it was just a narrative. But behind that, there was a quest 